Hello and welcome back to another day of Advent of Code. Uh, today is day two and we've got another um, pretty straightforward problem. I'm going to show you how I solved this one. Uh, hopefully you didn't have trouble with this one, uh, but let's jump into it. Okay, so the problem today is our input has a list of commands and numbers. We're navigating a submarine or something like that. I didn't read too closely into the lore. Um, but we're going to have lines that look similar to this with a command and some sort of value. Uh, and this is always going to be an integer. And I think they're all positive uh, from what I saw in my input. I'm pretty sure they're all positive. And for part one, we're going to be keeping track of two values, a position and a depth. And they both start at zero. So what I did for that is position equals depth equals zero. Uh, just going to initialize both of those at the same time, assign them to the same thing using a chained assignment here. You could also do them on separate lines if you want to, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we're gonna iterate through all of the lines. And for this, what I did was a four line in input s dot split lines. We were um, basically taking each new line and getting our, our own strings one at a time. Um, and then from there, we wanna parse these lines. And in this case, we wanna split on the white space. There's actually a couple ways that you can do this. Um, basically, we're going to end up with a command and a number string. And the easiest way to do this is just to do line.split. And if you pass no arguments to split, it's just going to split on white space, which is kind of kind of neat. Um, I also like to use partition. Uh, it doesn't actually have any benefits in this case, but if you use partition, it would look like this. Um, you could also have used split with a white space character. That would also work. Uh, but this is, you know, the least amount of typing that we wanted to hear. We also need to turn this string, because this is a string right now, we need to turn that into an integer. So we can do that by calling int. And that kind of finishes off the parsing part of this puzzle. So now we've parsed it into a command and an integer for the number. And now we just need to do what this says here. And for that, I just did a simple set of if statements. If command is equal to up, then we do uh, depth minus equals n. Otherwise, if the command is equal to down, then we do depth plus equals n. Uh, otherwise, if the command is equal to forward, we can do position plus equals n. And what I usually like to do is you know, just evaluate that we're getting good data in here. I'm gonna raise an assertion error uh, that just, says that you know we we got an unexpected command and i guess an unexpected n at the same time that way if it if it ever happens uh we'll have a nice error message there um but yeah that's basically the 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 looping part of this problem and then finally at the end oh i forgot to put this in here uh answer is position times depth and that's actually the same for both of these and so at the end we're just going to print position times depth position times depth. And that should get us part one. Let's call it t.py. Oh, <laughs> of course I have to fix my syntax errors. Uh, n equals a few little mistakes. Uh, but 150, and that is the expected value. Okay, cool. So that's part one. Um, part two, not much more complicated than part one, although we do introduce a third variable here. So we now also have, uh, I'm actually just going to copy and paste this down here so that we have two sets of this problem. Uh, we now have a third variable called aim that also gets initialized to zero. And our commands are actually changing what they do. Uh, for up, we are subtracting from aim. From down, we are adding to aim. And forward is gonna do two things this time. It's going to add the position. So we're still doing the same thing as the first time. Uh, but now it's also going to add aim times n to depth. So depth plus equals aim times n. And that's just keeping track of, you know, we kept track of this aim, we're modifying it here, and that causes depth to have more of a, a change here. And yeah, it's basically the same code as part one, just slightly adjusted. Basically, this was a reading problem and a parsing problem less than, uh, or, you know, ra rather than an actual programming problem. Uh, or a more complicated programming problem. It is still a programming problem. Um, and we get 900 for that, which is what we expect. Cool, uh, that's that's day two. Oh, I guess we should talk about algorithmic efficiency before we jump into things. Um, 
So uh, this for loop here is going to be, we'll talk about, we'll talk about uh, execution first, then we'll talk about space second. Uh, from an execution perspective, this is a linear loop. So it's, it's running over each line. So it's order N on the number of lines. And you know, this is, this is all constant work in here. So there's, there's no, no factor overhead. So this is a linear algorithm, which makes sense. Like we have to parse all the input at least once. Uh, from a space perspective, it could be constant overhead, just these variables. However, in Python, this split lines here is actually giving us, um, it's actually doing a full copy of the input. So it's actually a linear space overhead. Uh, but you could write this in a different way. Like if, if this were coming from a file, you could read one line at a time and then you would have no space overhead from the reading. Uh, this just happens to have a linear overhead because of the way that I've done this. Um, we could also even do something like this where we have a string IO. And actually I think that makes a copy. So even that's gonna be linear overhead, but you can probably ignore this when you're considering the the space, um, the, the algorithmic space here. So I would, I would say that this is linear time execution and constant space. That's how I would put it, even though we're technically using linear space. Anyway, that's day two. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed and Stay tuned for future days. I'll see you around in the future.